And there we are. On to our headliner. Our headliner is Jim Hutchins. Jim has been working in technology since 1998 on a variety of solutions from ASAP to online hosted solutions to cloud and SaaS platforms. Jim earned his computer science degree from Purdue. He has held multiple roles as an RE member data services, or, or RDS, a David Becker company, uh, from 1988 to 2004, and then as a general manager of Open Solutions RDS Technologies from 2004 to 2007. Uh, during which he took an active role in integrating over five other acquisitions. Currently, Jim is the CTO and EVP at T2 Systems since 2007. He is honored to be recognized as the CTO of the year by TechPoint and the IBJ. Jim is married with two wonderful children, ages seven and four. So please help me welcome the first ever Sparks Tech headliner, Mr. Jim Hutchins, to the stage. <laughs> Feeling all right, thank you all very much for uh, being willing to listen to me for 15 minutes, which uh, usually I have to call a meeting to make that happen. So uh, a little bit of background on me, which actually will be relevant to this talk. So I, I am a geek at heart. I, I have enjoyed technology for my entire life. I have uh, enjoyed working with uh, uh, the maker movement and playing with electronics and gadgets of all sorts. And, and now that my kids are just a little bit older, I'm enjoying sharing with them things like the Children's Museum, which they love that Bucky is in the back. They're going to get a picture of that tonight, the uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex head that uh, the Scott Jones Foundation helped with. Uh, and, and technology has just always been a part of my life. So I've, I've been working in technology for 27 years, um, which means I started my career when there were actual punch cards and big tapes that were about that big uh, that held 170 meg. And you had to load them in and wait for like an hour for it to load all the data on them. So it's been a while. Now, this, this is relevant in, in the talk that I'm giving to you today because I want to talk to you about my journey as a technologist. So for my first 19 years, I worked in banking technology. And we all have our little speech that we give when we introduce ourselves. You did it here tonight probably 20 times. Hi, what do you do? Where do you work? What, what are you doing with your life? And if you say you work in banking technology, even if no one knows what that means, they look at you and they go, oh, banking technology. Somehow that's okay. That's cool. You're doing something banking technology. I don't know what it means. There's tapes. There's punch cards. But it's technology and banking. So people recognize that and they, they, they think you're doing at least something. Um, then I got a job at T2 Systems. And, and as Chris introduced me, we do parking. People do not look at you the same way when you introduce yourself and say, I do parking. The first question is, so you sit in the booth? No, I don't sit in the booth. Do you write the tickets? No, I swear I don't write the tickets, and I can't get you out of the one that you got, even if it's our customer. Um, so um, we, we talk as we introduce ourselves, and, and then, then you have to explain, well, no, I'm really in parking technology. I'm on the technology side of things, and I, I'm the provider for uh, the technology behind this. And it's, it's actually been very interesting to me as I proceeded through my career to understand the customers I serve. So the customers I served for the first 19 years, they all knew they worked in banking. When they introduced themselves, they said, I work in banking. And whether people knew what they really did or not, they thought they knew. You work in banking. You deal with money. Money's complicated. We like money. I can borrow money. I can do things with money. So they talked about that, and they could be proud of their job. They would know. They, people thought they knew what they were doing. When you introduce yourself as someone who works in parking, they do not think that. So tonight, I would like to talk to you about pride. Pride in what you do and pride in how well you do it. And I'm going to relate that to this journey through from technology that everyone thought they understood when I introduced myself to technology that really people don't understand when I introduce myself. So we're going to talk about pride in what you do and how, pride in how well you do it. So early in my career in parking, very, very early, in the first month or two, I went to a training class. And uh, this training class was to understand parking because almost everyone who enters this company has no idea. We come in as technologists. We're coming in as customer service people. We're coming in uh, from a different angle. We're not coming from the parking industry. So one of our customers was kind enough to do a training video. Uh, and they trained us on what it meant to work in parking. And among other things, um, they said, well, there is no good day in parking. Your best day in parking is a day when no one yells at you, no one threatens you, no one questions your lineage or your parentage or really threatens to injure you or tries to injure you. So it was a very different world to, uh, to work in parking. And he went on to explain this, and I'll tell you a couple stories as I go on through this. So um, it was very hard to have pride in parking. And so um, as I talk to you about pride, pride gets a bad rap. You tell people that you're proud of things, the first thing people say is pride. Pride goeth before the fall. 
the actual quote is really from Proverbs. And actually, this is the first time I've ever used a Bible quote in one of my presentations, but I thought it was very relevant because it's not actually pride goes before the fall. It's pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before the fall. Um, and it's misquoted as pride goes before the fall. But it's for people to say, ah, you shouldn't be too prideful. Why are you being so prideful? You're, you get, you're boasting. Um, and, and you hear this in other places. You, St. Augustine said it was pride that changed angels to devils. And I don't know how I wound up working two religious quotes into one technology presentation, but it happened. Um, and this transcends cultures. This isn't just about Western culture. There's an Indian proverb that talks about three vicious thieves who uh, attacked uh, ten merchants along the side of the road. And these, these ten merchants managed, managed to overcome these three thieves because the three thieves were so prideful that they basically turned their backs on and, and thought that there was no way that these merchants could overtake them and wound up being overrun by them. I've shortened a very much longer parable into uh, about 30 seconds or less. Uh, but there's a timer, so it's okay. Um, so we talk about those pride, but th that's not the kind of pride I'm talking about. That pride is hubris. It's being too proud. That's where, where you've lost sight of who you really are and what, and what you should be proud of. So the kind of pride I want to talk about, uh, a, a couple good quotes. And uh, I don't know where I got these all, but I Googled pride, and it seemed like these were a good idea at the time, so I'm going to keep them in here. Margaret Thatcher. Of, oh, see, I went from the Bible to Margaret Thatcher. Try and do that in a speech. So Margaret Thatcher said, um, Disciplining yourself to do what you know is right and important, although difficult, is the high road to pride, self-esteem, and personal satisfaction. And that's the pride I'm talking about. I'm not talking about boastful pride. I'm not talking about false pride or hubris. I'm talking about the kind of pride that W. Edwards Deming talked about. And, and so for those of you who don't know, he's a famous engineer. He's widely regarded as being uh, a major part of the movement that helped turn Japan around after World War II. And he very simply said uh, that it is quality is pride of workmanship talks about that kind of pride. So that's the kind of pride I want to talk to you about tonight. So this all goes into job prestige. So I talked to you about parking. So I looked this up. I found a couple studies, and, and been a, there was a very recent one done by the Harris Poll uh, that uh, talked about what the uh, most admired job was. The most admired job, anybody got a guess? Doctor. Of course it's a doctor. They save lives. If you, tell, if you introduce yourself at a party and say, I'm a doctor, what do they be? Oh, you save lives. Doesn't matter what kind of doctor you are. You must have saved a life today. Probably two or three. So it, it becomes very easy. You have, you have pride with that. So I went through this, and they ranked everything. So doctors, 86% of people were, thought uh, that that was a profession to be admired. I don't know what the other 14% of the people were thinking, but 86% admired physicians. And so I went all the way down through the scale. So the very bottom position on there was miscellaneous food preparation occupations. Now, mind you, that's not all food service. I worked food service. I helped pay for college with food service. They had a special category for miscellaneous. It was separate from people who were waiters and waitresses. It was separate from people who were busboys. It was miscellaneous. And that had a score of 16. Parking is 21. Physicians, 86. Parking, 21. Miscellaneous food service, 16. That's what we're looking at. Now, good news for the technologists in the room because computer systems analysts and scientists, 73. You're not physicians, but people think you do something awesome. They, they probably don't understand what you do, but... You introduce yourself, you work in computers, they admire what you do, probably because they don't know what you do, um, speaking from personal experience. So you don't have a lot of folks that have a lot of job prestige, and I have no idea where I am on my time, but that's okay. So we're just going to keep going. Uh, so I mentioned before the best day in parking is a day uh, where people don't yell at you. So that really uh, transcends all industries. So you can have a good day in banking, you can have a good day as a physician, you can have a really good day as a physician. Um, this is, a, this is a show that ran on A&E. It wasn't really widely publicized. It's called Parking Wars. For three years, they followed around people who worked in parking and saw all the horrible things that they experienced. People threatening at them, people spitting on them, people doing things you would never think that a human being would do to another person. But this is, these are the customers that my company serves. Not this particular company. We don't do Philadelphia, but we do a lot of different places. And this is really what happens. They, didn't, they pick the good ones or the bad ones, depending upon how you want to look at it. But this is really what happens. So th this is what people live with. So I stole that graphic off their site. This is actually the closest thing you get to a good day in parking. So this is, uh, on the left, is Blake Lawfer, who is our director of uh, research and development, uh, or our vice president of research and development. And uh, he got a ticket while he was actually doing a site visit. So for the first time ever, this parking enforcement officer probably got somebody who smiled while getting a ticket. Because then he grilled him for about 10 minutes on how he liked the way they did it and their process and the whole thing because he's the vice president of research and development. So that's what he's going to do. So instead of this guy getting yelled at, he's looking at, at Blake walking up on him, and he's afraid this guy's going to go off about getting a ticket. Instead, he wants to grill him on how he does his job. 
So you probably had the closest thing you ever get to a good day in parking. Uh, the other one I have is not from anyone that we know. This is a picture from the uh, Halifax Police uh, Facebook page. So this young man, this is actually okay. They did this tongue-in-cheek. These are people who are proud of what they do with parking. So they actually put it, you can't really read the caption very well down here. It says, remember, you cannot park your motorcycle in the circle by the ferry terminal. We caught this ruthless biker there yesterday. Now, this child was well known to the police there, and their parents were right there. But, and he's playing right along. They're actually proud of what they do because by keeping that lane clear, they're actually keeping the ferry terminal accessible to people. They, that's, people always think of parking as enforcement officers who are really just trying to get money from you. And although that is sometimes a motive, it's often really a motive around keeping areas accessible and keeping them safe. And so I'll give you a couple examples of how that uh, played out um, within, our, uh, within our customer base. So um, the first one uh, is, is probably the singularly most amazing story that, uh, uh, I've, that I've personally heard. So I believe this to be true, although I was not there for it. Um, so I, I said earlier, it's pride in what you do and pride in how well you do it. So uh, one of our customers had a pretty nasty newspaper story written about the evil dark, nasty parking enforcement agency that had ticketed an old woman while she was in church. And that was how the story ran. The mean parking enforcement officer not only ticketed her, he towed her car while she was in church. So that doesn't play very well in the news. So now this parking enforcement officer happened to actually have a lot of pride in his job, and he believed he was doing a public service. See, what got left out of the original newspaper article was that he was doing his rounds as a parking enforcement officer, and he found a vehicle parked in a crosswalk at an intersection. Um, dangerous. People were walking around it, walking out into traffic in order to avoid this parked car that was blocking the crosswalk. So he could have had it towed and ticketed right then, or ticketed and towed. Instead, he actually walked into the church because he figured that was the only thing that was open at that hour. He went and found an usher. He waited for the usher to walk up onto the platform, have them announce from the platform, would the owner of the car that's parked in the crosswalk with this license plate number please go out and move it before it's towed. And he waited for a couple minutes, and when nothing happened, he actually did issue the citation and call the tow truck driver. He also took a bunch of pictures of this car. He took pictures of people walking around it. He took pictures of it in the parking lot, in the, in the crosswalk. Uh, he took pictures of why it was wrong. He also wrote down a bunch of notes. And then before, he had had one of those little two-part carbonless forms, like you saw a couple pictures ago. And it would have been very difficult to record the fact that these, uh, that these facts were there. All he would have been able to do is ch check a box that said parked illegally. And that's why they would have towed it, maybe parked in a crosswalk. Instead, he had all this wonderful evidence. So day one, the story runs in the newspaper talking about the evil, horrible parking enforcement office that towed the little old lady's car while she was in church. The next day, they printed a retraction about how they towed the little old lady's car who was blocking the intersection, endangering the lives of families as they were trying to come and go from church. Um, now, they weren't quite as gracious in the retraction as they were in the original story when, the, uh, uh, when they were vilifying, because obviously bad news makes a better story. But this officer had pride. So this was a guy who's not out there trying to take your money. He's not out there trying to mess with your day and ruin it. And I, and I know that's always, if you get a ticket, you know, it never makes your day. But that's not what most parking enforcement officers are doing, and that's the thing that people forget. Some of our customers have even renamed them as parking ambassadors. And I know there may be a little bit of news speak to that, but in a lot of cases, that's what they're really trying to do. Because the thing you have to remember is nobody ever say, gets up in the morning and says, I think I'm going to get up and I'm going to go park. They say, I'm going to get up and go to the museum, and I've got to park while I'm there. I'm going to go to church, and I'm going to park while I'm there. I'm going to go to the store. And so when you think about that process, the best day that you can have as a parker is when nothing goes wrong. Nobody tickets you, and you can find a space. That's the best that you get out of this. So a lot of these parking enforcement officers are really there trying to make sure that the businesses that are relying on customers to get in uh, are, are getting that kind of traffic flow that they're looking for, and they're looking to make sure that people are safe because a lot of times people do really dumb things, and it's their job to handle that. Did you know if you park more than a foot from the curb, you're going to get a ticket and maybe towed? By the way, some of our employees learn that after they get hired, and then we mock them. Uh, so, uh, it, it, so it really is about pride. And uh, one other quick story on here that's the other way. So you, a lot of us here work with data. You hear the big data story lately. Um, ev everything's about big data. We're going to big data the heck out of everything, right? Because you can solve everything with it. Now, you can solve a whole lot of things with it. But I talked a minute ago about parking tickets not necessarily being about revenue. And there are absolutely some parking organizations that earn revenue through their citations and that that's part of their business. Uh, there's a lot more of them used simply as a deterrent to make people park where they're supposed to park, right? To encourage them because you really can't force them to do that. So one of our customers actually analyzes all of their data. They take a look at where they're issuing citations. They look at where and when they're issuing citations, and they look for what they did wrong. 
They have so much pride in their parking organization because their whole job is to facilitate people, in this case it's a campus, facilitate people coming onto campus. If they're a student, if they're a prospective student, if they're a professor, if they're a guest, if they're coming to a sporting event, they want them to come on campus and have a good experience during this whole process. So what they've done is they've taken a look at all the data they see. And when they see that they're issuing a lot of citations, they don't go, wait, let's send more parking enforcement officers there to write more citations so we can get more money. They look at why they're writing so many citations. Is it not well lit? Is there not good signage? Are people not realizing that there are other opportunities to park around there? So they're actually using it to improve the experience because they're proud. They're proud of the parking organization. They're now I don't know when I'm going to finish. I was all ready to wrap up right when that timer hit the end, and it's back to 352. Well, the good news is I'm on the last slide. Um, all right. So <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, the real world of this is our customers when the, and, our, and uh, the people who work in this industry, even though they aren't thinking about pride, uh, the, they don't have the pride that you see when you're a doctor, you're a firefighter, or you're a computer scientist, they do have the pride that they can make things better for people, both their employees and the customers that they serve. So with that, thank you very much. I can't tell where the journey will end.